Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make groovy tech house like Miguel Bastida and Wade. As usual, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all of that stuff from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this is the loop you heard in the intro, we're at 127 BPM. First sound we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So here's the kick sample, you can see it's just like this punchy, fat kick. Just gotta go in through a bit of saturation to kind of beef it up. Here's without that. And then with it, so you can hear this makes this really full, you know, it really fills out like the mid-range and the low mid-range of the kick, as well as the low end. You know, to really make it hit and be powerful and full sounding in the mix. After that, we have the bass, which sounds like this. So here's the bass line. It's really simple. It's just in the key of A minor. So you can see it's mostly just droning on this A. And then we go down to like the minor 7th G and the minor 3rd C up here. But yeah, not super complicated. You don't want the most like all over the place bass line with the style of Tech House. You know, if you really want this kind of bass line to work in your track, it needs to just be simple and catchy like this. You know, it should be like two or three notes, maybe four notes maximum. For the sound with this one, it's made using operator. You can see we've got this FM sound here, so it's just three sine waves all at the same octave. And it's really basically a sine wave. Like there's just a sine wave. But just with a little bit more harmonic content on top as you can hear. To make it a bit warmer and a bit fatter than just like a basic sine wave on its own. I've got that going through a little bit of drum bus. Here's without that. And then with it, drum bus is really good for bass lines with the style because, you know, you really need the bass line to be fat. You need it to be as fat as the kick, really. And like a really fat kick sample, it's going to be hard to just get like a few sine waves to kind of have that same fullness. But drum bus is a great way to do it because it just adds so much like fatness in the low end and the low mid range, which is exactly what you need. And then we've just got that going through a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, pretty standard fare for this style. And then I have this EQ here, which is cutting at 100 hertz because if you look on, like I'll pull the spectrum up here, you can see the kick. See you how know, a lot of where the kick is hitting is at 100 hertz. It's like 100 hertz and then 52 hertz down there. So if we cut that on the bass, it's making a bit more room and now the kick can kind of shine through a little bit more while still keeping the bass in that low end and then the low mid range where we want it. Add the kick and the bass in a group together. This is known as a bust. Essentially it's when you take multiple sounds kind of in the same group like you can see the kick and the bass both low end elements or you know all the percussion elements and you put them in a group together and process them as one thing and what you get is a lot more cohesive and tighter and fatter sound and I'll show you what I mean. All I have on the low end bus it's just a bit of saturation, but here's without it. And then with it, so you can hear, like, you know, it's really filling in those spaces there and kind of just making the low end all the more cohesive and tighter in the track. And also, of course, fatter. After that, we have this chord stab, which sounds like this. So this one is just like this little kind of sampled chord stab. You can see we've got it in here. I've got to pitch down a little bit. It's just playing like at the end of every bar pretty much. Just like that little, just like a little melodic stab. You know, this serves the purpose of making it so that it's not just the rhythm section. Because like if you have just the bass and drums, this kind of feels like the intro to me. But then as soon as you add in like one melodic thing like this, It feels a little bit more like the actual track, you know, like you need something like this to round it out. 
Uh, yeah, and then I have this reverb on here. So the reverb is something also pretty essential with the style. Like these guys use this type of reverb a lot on vocal samples, little chord stabs like this, little synth, a sen little synth. Essentially, what it is is just like a very short reverb. You can see I turn the size down, turn the decay down, and then what happens is you still get that like, like that little hit of space. But this way, it's not like too long because if you just have the size all the way up, like, and the decay time up. You know, that much reverb feels kind of weird in a track like this, but if you have this really tight, kind of short reverb like that, you can really give this sound a lot more space while still keeping it under control in the track. And like I said, like, you can use the same kind of reverb on vocal samples, on chord stabs like this, synths, anything, but like, just to give it that little bit of space while still keeping it, you know, tight and rhythmic for this style of track. Because obviously with this style of track, you know, you don't want anything like super ambient. And yeah, then after that, we have finally just this drum bus. It's just fattening the sound up. It's not doing a whole lot. Here's without it. And then with it. You don't need a whole lot, but this just brings out the reverb a little bit and kind of makes it hit a bit more. And yeah, after that, we have the percussion, which starts with this main hi-hat, which is two layers, and it sounds like this. So what's going on here is we have this layer, more of like a mid-rangey kind of punchy layer, and then we have this one which is much more in the high end, and then it's also being spread out a little bit with this echo. What I'm doing here this is a really great technique actually. If you're trying to make your hi-hat a bit wider, try putting this echo on here. What it's doing is I have it on the ping pong setting, and then we have it just on like a really fast time, so you're, it's really like... Yeah, that's what's happening. It's a delay, but then by making it really fast, you just get that quick, like, stereo kind of widening. Here's without the echo. And then with it, so you can hear what that's doing, and this on its own might not work so well, but then you layer that with, like, a really punchy hi-hat. And there you go, it kind of fills it out, because when I was putting this track up against reference tracks from these guys, I noticed they have really big hi-hats, like this main hi-hat, it's one of the loudest things in the mix, as you can hear. And so you really have to, like, not just turn it up, but do stuff like this to kind of accentuate it, by having, like, a wide layer in there. But yeah, and then after that, we just have those both going into a bit of saturation, here's without that. And then with it, you can hear when you have two different sounds like this, it really helps to kind of make them sound like one when you put the saturation on there. And then finally, I just have an EQ on there, which is just cutting the lows out and then also doing that little high end boost there. Because you can see, it kind of tapers off. So that just brings back in some of that brightness. And yeah, after that, we have this drum rack with percussion, which sounds like this. So I'll play this with the hi-hat and the clap so you can kind of hear. So this is essentially all that little percussion that you hear in the track. It's just these four different sounds that I brought in here. And then I've just kind of made this little pattern. This type of stuff isn't that hard, you know. All you really have to do is just pick a few percussion sounds, you know. Maybe you just find a sample pack that you like, you grab some percussions from there, maybe you get them from this sample pack, link is in the description, and you just kind of bring them into a drum rack here and start adding in little like 16th notes, kind of bouncing off the hi-hat. And it's just all about adding that energy, you know, because if you listen, like, I'll play you just the hi-hat and clap on their own. And then bring in that percussion. You know, you can hear, like, that's the purpose of this stuff. It's just adding that energy and kind of filling out the beat a bit more. And yeah, after that, we have these shakers, which sound like this. So this is another drum rack. You can see we just got these two shakers in here doing, like, chick -chick -chick -chick. I've got them swung a little bit, too. Like, if I put this on the 16th note grade. You've seen this with everything, the bass line, the percussion, the chord stab. None of the 16th notes are like perfectly on the grid. They're kind of pushed back a little bit. Basically, this is just going chick 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 And then what I've done is I've gotten two different samples here inside of a drum rack. 
So it feels a little bit more live because now you're hearing like two separate things and it feels a little bit more like a real shaker rather than you know if you just get one and it's just you know it just sounds like the same thing but this way you get more of that like kind of dynamic and yeah you know because if we got a live shaker in here this one is very rigid and like tight on the groove with all the other stuff that's happening if we got a live shaker in here it wouldn't really have that same tightness to it and it wouldn't sound as full you just gotta get like a few shakers in a drum rack like this and kind of make it sound like Yeah, sound like it's a live shaker And yeah, and then the last layer that we have inside the percussion here is just its clap which sounds like this So this is more about the type of sound I think than the actual like programming because programming is simple You mostly like with this style just want to get this really fat, you know quick punchy clap like this very mid-rangey you see if I put it up on the spectrum there it's very much like in that high mid-range and it's just hitting like perfectly over the kick there because it's not too bright or too sharp you know it's still got that kind of like earthy feel to it but it hits hard and yeah and then I have all that percussion in a group together which you can see we just got it going through a bit of drum bus and a bit of EQ just to do a slight high end boost so just like with the low end bus you know when you put it all through saturation like this it's gonna glue it all together here is without any processing. And then with it. So you can hear what's happening there. You know, the strum bus is really bringing everything out. And then that high end boost just helps to kind of bring back some of those sharp highs, as you can see. I'm missing a little bit there. So yeah, drum bus just got drive up, crunch up a little bit, and got the damp all the way up. It's on the medium setting. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Like I said, as long as you do some kind of saturation like this on the group of all your percussion, it should sound pretty full and pretty good like this. And yeah, so that's me for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All that stuff from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.